morning, morning. Luckily we have Zoom so we can be inside to learn about birds instead of having to go outside to learn about birds. So we have Laura Elder and Trina in the background there from Alley Park to discuss bird watching. So Elder, uh, Laura, <laughs> Laura, go right ahead. Hi there. Hey, I did just hear a bird outside. We have some soot feeders still outside. So yeah, we could have probably went out on the porch, but I think it would have been a little bit of wait wet rainy day for that still yet for our technology so we're just going to do this indoors and yes you can enjoy a good indoor bird watching or bird listening experience we have a lot of technology that can help us with that in learning and this is all about bird talking and um, I, I just love watching birds it's a hobby of mine and mostly I don't plan it. You know, I'm out and about and I hear a bird singing and I'm going, what is that? I got to figure out what they're saying. And they kind of are talking in a way. Um, they don't speak the human language, but they are the ornithologists who study birds um, figured out that they have somewhat of a speech pattern with syllables that you can try to remember what a bird is saying basically or, or singing and memorize that bird because half the time you're not gonna see the bird, you're gonna hear the bird. And that counts if you're trying to do a bird count and there's um, other places you can look up bird counts if you wanna participate in that. So one way that they, that the ornithologists and avid bird watchers have discovered that there's a thing called bird song mnemonics. And I don't know if you're familiar with mnemonics and I'm gonna read this portion of it because it's about memorizing and, and memorizing is a weakness in me with the older I get. So it helped um, the birdsong mnemonics or mnemonics is a system that helps with memorization. And a good example of that is the, the order of planets. And so it goes like this, my very enthusiastic mother just served us noodles. And if you pay attention to the first letter of each word, that helps you to remember the order of the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. And remember, Pluto is the dog now, that's not a planet anymore. So I don't know how they would have added that P to it. So anyways, bird song mnemonics match the calls of the birds with the phrase and the syllables to the phrase sound like the bird song. And when bird watchers memorize these phrases, they can use them to identify the types of birds that they hear. So if you're out and about and you hear, drink your tree or drink your tea, drink up your tea, -e, of course it's not gonna sound like that. And I don't talk bird very well. So I have my little app here that I have to re -cue up. Uh, here it is, hopefully you can hear it. This is um, the Cornell Lab Merlin app, Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N, and it goes with the Cornell Laboratories. So I just queued up the bird and there's sound files on it. And it, can you hear it? Do it again. Can you hear drink your tea? I'll do it one more time. And it'll, it'll do that several times and who knows, we might have a bird come along and, and mimic or copy that, but I'm gonna try to share this. Is the glare gone? Can you see it? That's an Eastern towhee. And their, their mnemonic or, or phrase is drink your tea, drink up your tea. Somebody just take a picture or something? <laughs> something flash here. So another one, another bird that you get, get a good example of, and I'm not sure if it's on this app, but it says, your money, your money, your money. It sounds like a robber. And this is a summer bird. Can you see it, glare? Okay, it's a common yellow throat. And one of their mnemonics is, your money, your money, your money. And we have a cat bird coming right here. That's called pumpkin <laughs> going meow. Yes, and cat birds also, they are, and this is a nice segue, I'm petting the cat right now. A nice segue, there, is a, there are mocking birds and there are birds that like to mimic and cat birds are one of them. And I can find a picture if you're not familiar with it. 
Okay, pumpkin just distracted me, but it's a cat bird. And one of their calls, their, their notorious call is meow. Uh, okay, I think I have a picture of it. Excuse me for a second, because this wasn't planned. There it is, but pumpkin had to help. It's not, not a very attractive bird. It's a gray bird, but it's a cat bird and it's meow, meow. And I don't imitate them quite well. I can see if I can cue it up, pumpkin stay out of there. <laughs> so another, another bird sound that you might find later in the evenings or in the middle of the night. And it sounds like it's saying, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And I do love imitating this one. The bard out. So basically, it's those phrases that help you to remember the bird. So when teaching kids bird talk, I like to start with something easier. Because, you know, when birds sing, and, and uh, here's the cat. <laughs> <laughs> when birds sing, you, you hear them a lot in the springtime and uh, you hear them mostly in the morning. Sorry, <laughs> I think you did something to save me. There's paper spread all over the table and cats love that. <laughs> so they, they, you hear them in the spring mostly and you hear them in the morning. If you're camping, that's not fun for some people who wanna sleep in, who, for, from a long night of not being able to sleep. But me, I love it. I love it. It's a sign of spring. Why do birds sing in the springtime mostly? Well, it's the male birds mostly that are singing. And, and they're there to establish a territory. They're there to find a mate mostly. And that's, and that's why they, they sing. Another thing they do are distress calls that, that let the rest of the bird population, it doesn't have to be that same species, but lets the, the rest of the bird population know, hey, there's a cat. <sighs> How perfect timing was that? There's a cat or there's other kind of predator. There's a hawk that likes to prey on them and pumpkins and Trina's window now. How cute. So it, it's a distress call and that's totally different than from what you would normally hear. So I'm gonna pull up on this the Northern Cardinal. I like to, when I teach kids, I like to start with something that's common and your common backyard birds. Because in the springtime, there's so many birds trying to establish their territory and sing and everything. It's hard to identify them singularly, but some of the common backyard birds, you can start with teaching kids that. So the Northern Cardinal, and let me cue up that. I like to say, now, there are many states that have the Northern Cardinal as their state bird, but it's our state bird and it's a special state bird because it is our cheerleader to the Buckeyes. That's what I share with the kids. And they have some really interesting sounds. And, and for those who don't know what a Cardinal is, there you are. I like to introduce it this way. It's our Buckeye bird and it has the little pom-poms and it's going to cheer and it's going to go, what? Cheer, cheer, cheer. You may have heard that before. So let me see if I can cue up some of that. A lot of whites and some cheers. And this, this bird has several different kinds of calls. More. You hear all the other birds in the background. And what's interesting is the female cardinal is the one that will respond back to their mates. So they have different vocalizations. I think I hear one outside too. You can hear the different vocalizations. Pro in the background. Yeah. 
And this is a duet. I think it might be between two males. Sounds like a saying over here, over here. That's the female. And that's, that's the interesting thing about our, our Northern Cardinal is all the different vocalizations. It is our state bird. So that would be a good one to introduce to uh, students, the Northern Cardinal. Uh, another one that signifies spring, one of my favorites, the American Robin. And, and some people say, oh, they migrate and, they, and they, they go away and they're their first sign of springs. Well, a lot of times they flock together and they hang out and you see them when the ground is thawed and they're looking for insects and worms and everything. So, sorry, um, I'm gonna to try to find the cardinal here. It's, there's a lot of birds in this app and I just updated it to the Midwest. So there's some things I have to figure out with this, there, or not, I said cardinal, robin, here we go. So the robins is a cheery bird. And one of their mnemonics is cheerily cheer up, cheerily cheer up. And you and they're one of the first birds that you're going to hear in the morning. Pamela, did you hear that bird this morning going cheerily cheer up? And then it's usually the cardinal that pitches in and starts to sing. And then all the forest goes alive or your backyard even. So here. This It's a very cheery sound. There's another one. Not quite words to that I can hear. Cheerily, cheerily. So it's a way of remembering it, basically. Um, this is another one that you are you would hear a lot of. The morning dove. And I think it's it's kind of, I love the mnemonics for this because it goes and boy do I look silly doing that. <laughs> so that I mean did, instantly did you recognize that? Hula hoop, hoop, hoop. So you know if you're out with with other folks and and you can mimic that one pretty easily. So another one. That's common in your backyard is the blue jay. And I think the most common sound that you hear from them is J, 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 J. I believe that's probably how they got their name. J, J. But the interesting thing is blue jays are, are closely related to the crow family. And they have a large vocalization, a large range that it's even hard to imitate because they can mimic other birds too. They can mimic a red shoulder hawk in the distance you think oh there's a hawk out there why do they do that i'm not sure if it's just to to make birds come out to, to see as a distress call i don't know why they do it but it, it's pretty interesting so um let's see what else do i have up here any questions so far none whatsoever um, let's talk about the field guides then. What, what you need when, when you go out, you don't need a lot of tools if you're just going out to listen to birds. But what's kind of cool about listening to birds, if you can at least get a, a general location of them, you might be able to see the bird. And then, then you've just marked that down as, hey, I saw the bird, I heard the bird, and, and I'm gonna look up and research more on it. And this app, the Merlin app, not only has the sound of the birds, it has the, the um, range where they can be found. Uh, when are, what, what season are they common in? Because a lot of our birds are coming and they're migrating in. They're here now and they're singing, but they won't be here in the winter time because there's no insects to help them to survive. And the, the, the seed feeders would stay because us kind people feed them. But there's other guides that can help you. Of course, the internet is 
a ton of resources. Do any of you even use a CD player anymore? Because these books, okay, it's, it's published by Ohio Department of Natural Resources. I'm not sure if they still have CD accompaniment books, but I know that these are now you can download in a PDF format. So they have the common birds, they have the water birds, and yes, they have their unique vocalizations as well. Um, this is a fairly newer one, um, raptors, which is interesting. And owls, I'm not sure if the raptor one has a CD accompaniment since it's newer, they may not even have developed that. But all the others, and this one's a tough one. If you can figure out warbler songs, you are good because those are really tough and there are CDs that go with it. They, and many of them don't even have a mnemonic phrasing because they just, they're just hard to follow. Um, also, get yourself a really good field guide because a lot of them will also have the mnemonics of the birds and everything in it as well. That would be helpful. Uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much it when it comes to bird talk and what, what you need to, to learn about it. If you're teaching children, keep it simple. In the very beginning, you know, I would ask them to help them learn the mnemonics of, of the, the language of birds or the, the, the phrases. I would ask them, okay, um, did you know bird talks? They can talk not the human language, but they do communicate. And, and ornithologists put words to it to help us to remember that. And, I, and they kind of still give you that blank stare. It's like, well, can you tell me the sound of a duck? And they, of course they know that, quack. A goose, goose would go honk honk. And then I would start getting a little bit more, diff, or a little bit more hard, you know, what's the sound of a blue jay? They know what a blue jay is, but what's the sound? In, you know, J, J, and just go into it a little bit further. I developed little cards to hand out to them and we do a dawn chorus where they'd have the picture of the bird, the phrases, and they would all sing at the same time because everybody has a different name usually and um, the birds have a different, different way of communicating as well. Any questions? <laughs> Laura, do you have the whippoorwill sound on the app? Let me see. What would that? That was always one my grandma would say. Do you hear the whippoorwills? And I would, I can. That's the only one I have to say. Maybe the blue jay too, but that's the only one that I can remember. Let's see. There's a lot on this. I know at Geneva Hills, Mike and I go camping there, and we are up all night practically listening to the whippoorwill right in the valley and it's just after a while it's like oh listen to the whippoorwill and then all night long they go whippoorwill whippoorwill um you give me a minute it should be on here because they should be around I'm dizzy from looking at this okay it has to be on here and it wouldn't fall under a pigeon. It wouldn't fall under that. Because they have, can, I don't know, is there a glare? I know putting the device up with the device, they have a little key right here. And then you can scroll up another way. But the key, they have it by their body posture to help you to locate the bird a little bit quicker. Like from a songbird to a duck, they're going to have a different body posture that would um, help you to locate it. So I'm thinking it's more close to a water bird, but not in posture at least. And I can't find it. That's okay, I can download the app. Mm -hmm. And there's another app too that I use that I'm, I'm still learning. It's, um, let's see if I can find it real quick. It's eBird and we uploaded that one when we were doing um, uh, the, uh, I just lost my train of thought, uh, when we're doing a bird watch and we were um, 
trying to identify them as well. And it's eBird by Cornell Labs. Both of these are through Cornell Labs. And you can actually record a bird. Here is just what popped up when I popped the app up. Is it backwards? Yeah, it's backwards. It's not backwards for you. It's backwards here. But um, it, you can record the bird and then submit it and then they can help you identify it. Or if you took a picture of the bird and submit it, they can help you identify it. And I have absolutely nothing in mind because I haven't, haven't really explored that option very well. So yeah, those are two neat little apps and I'm certain there's more out there that you could download to help you with birding. One of my favorite calls is, I believe it's the purple finch because it really sounds like somebody talking to me. And I didn't know if you had a sample of that, but I also don't know if it's a purple finch or a house finch I'm hearing whenever, but I hear it a lot around here. House finches are more common than the purple finch, but they look a lot alike. They're very similar. They both so have that red tone, right? Yeah, they're, they're similar in appearance and I believe those would be under, sparrows. So this is also um, under um, new world sparrows, sparrows and old world sparrows listings as well. So it's, it's kind of really interesting. Let's see. Where did it go? New My world. kids like to listen to it and then try to like translate it into a sentence, which is pretty fun. So what's really cool is um, the house finch, okay, here's here. You wanna hear the purple finch? Here we go. And there has like one, two, three, four, five, six little, six different variations. That sound familiar? Here's another variation. That's getting closer. Another variation. Very warbly. And another variation. That's an easier one. So that was a purple finch. Now the difference between a purple finch and a house finch, which is more common. That's sounding like it. Another variation. I live in Lancaster and that's what we have in town. Yeah, the, the answer in the background is the one that sounds like it. Yeah, they're so sassy. That's why I like them. Yeah, well, that and chickadees are kind of sassy for a bird that's probably about this big. They can have a loud voice. Outside, I'm hearing a uh, uh, red bellied woodpecker, and it sounds like it's going chur, 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 chur. Can you hear it? Wait, that was outside, you could hear it. I think Pumpkin can hear it. Yeah, he can hear it. <laughs> Red Belly Woodpecker, Chur Chur. I think I have a picture of it. Right here it is. Or Chur Chur, Chur Chur. Yeah, that's what's out there making that noise. We have the soot feeder still up for them and they, they've been enjoying it. I do like my woodpeckers. So with that, um, I hope that that helps with, um, I don't know what all you guys are gonna be doing as teaching aides or, or um, just hobbyists, or I hope that helps out somewhat. Hey Donna, um, do you still have your class there? I was wondering if they had any feedback for you from a class representative. Yes, we're still here. We've been watching and listening to all the bird songs. Okay, does anybody have any questions? In any questions for anybody else? No. Well, I have a my question. Advice. Oh, okay. 
Any suggestions on a really good bird feeder to keep the squirrels out? I have tons of birds, but the squirrels are, you know, they make a picnic out of it and the birds don't get anything. Oh, wow. Well, there is, I mean, I don't know how I can help you. There's an interesting video out um, about a squirrel that's figured out this whole obstacle course to see, to, to get to their reward. There are some bird feeders though that um, you could set the weight of where the perching part is and it pulls it down when a squirrel gets on it and it, it, they can't get to the seed. But of course these squirrels have figured out how to counterbalance. Maybe they have a buddy there that's reaching in and, and they can, they, they're so smart. And then there's another interesting one that the bird or the squirrel gets on it and it's got a battery power in it and it spins the bird off or the, the squirrel off, not the bird. And it's kind of fun to watch, but they, they're so intelligent, they'll figure it out. Um, my advice would be maybe to set up a special feeder for the squirrels with food that they love, like peanuts, corn, those kinds of things. There's a blue jay out there going jay, 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 jay right now. And, and just feed them too, because they're gonna just decimate the good seed for your birds. But they, they, they are fun to watch too. But starlings, I have a problem with. They, they can really, in town, and here we don't have that problem at Alley Park, but they could really wipe out a bird feeder really quick too. Yeah, they're hard on bird feeders too, that and the blue jays. Um, you know, cause I live right up against a bunch of fields and woods and yeah, they're, they're pretty tough on them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the variety of bird feeders that you have to get just to specialize to a certain bird. Um, like if you want to have finches, um, like uh, American gold finches, you know, just a tube feeder where they can cling to it to get to the seed. Um, smaller perches, the blue jays won't care for, or they won't be able to, to hang on to it. But this, unfortunately though, your cardinals aren't very well adept for those two, those tube feeders as well. So, it, you know, it's, you know, who do you want to attract to your feeder? Just got to put up with some of them. They are hungry. <laughs> yeah, between the birds, the raccoons, the squirrels, the deer. Yeah, it, it's, it's like a pantry. <laughs> You're gonna feed them all. The deer can, I've seen them just take a whole feeder down. We we had a feeders up in the side at Alley Park, in the, in the back shelter, and they were fine during the winter because the raccoons, they, they kind of like go to sleep a little bit. They don't hang out as much. And then one day I went out to check the feeders to put some seed in there. And one of our feeders was taken all the way down to Lake Loretta. It's like, okay, those feeders have got to go down because the raccoons have figured out how to get to this new system. So it's about the timing as well. And, you know, after a while, you, you won't have to feed the birds as much because there's going to be plenty of food for them and you want them to learn how to survive on their own as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. This isn't a question, but it's a little bit of a funny story that I thought of when this came up that uh, I just happened to walk in. My wife was watching a movie and it was about bird watching. It had like Jack Black and Owen Wilson and uh, uh, Steve Martin in it. And it's just funny because it was this group of people. And I don't even know if this exists or if it was just a meetup thing, but about a group of people that go around and they like a competition to see how many birds you can identify and see or something like that? Well, I'm not sure. Um, I've never gone into it that deep, but that is a hilarious movie. I know exactly what one you're talking about. I mean, it was, they would practically not kill, but you know, just <laughs> to get that bird to identify that was their, their main goal. That was, that's a funny movie. Yeah, Are there people out there? Probably <laughs> fanatically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a funny mix because of, you know, like Jack Black and Steve. You wouldn't think of those people, you know, being involved in something like that. So that's what, yeah, it was funny. Pam, did you want to talk, talk about Mark Rober? Mark Rober? 
I don't know. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, it was just, that's the, he's the guy on YouTube that did the scroll obstacle course video. So if you look up Mark Rober, you'll find that. And he's releasing a second one just for anybody who wants to know it's coming out soon. So th that's the gen that's the gentleman that has other um, scientific things. He's yeah. like a, a physicist for NASA. NASA, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's fun. He has a lot of other shows out there, but the bird yeah, my, the obstacle course is the best. It's a pretty good one. My kids are big fans, and so we talk about Fantastic Gus all the time. All right, does anyone have any other questions, comments? Thanks, Melissa, for feeding the squirrels. <laughs> I'll tell you, I feed the squirrels, I have deer, I have coyotes. Um, they walk right through the yard. Last week I had a fox, a big red fox that was in the yard uh, a couple nights. Um, he was after the rabbit. I don't know if he got him, but I haven't seen the rabbit. He may have relocated. Um, yeah, it's, it's like wild kingdom here. Sounds like a fun place. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If no one else has any other questions, um, we can thank Laura and Trina. Trina, thanks for tuning in over there. And Pumpkin mm -hmm. um, for giving us a discussion today about bird watching and I'm going to put in, um, when we put it on YouTube, I'm going to put a link to those apps as well. So if you guys didn't catch those, um, those will be on the YouTube link. So I think that's all for today. I want to let you know in May coming.